Carlos, you know I love the stories. Yes, I know. Okay. The soaps. <laughs> so I love, love the soaps. I love the soaps. This is Xander. So our next guest Xander plays, sitting right here plays next to us. Xander <laughs> on, on the one and only Days of Our Lives. One and he, only. He wanted, I love that. I love that show. He's also appeared on shows like NCIS, Once Upon a Time, also another great show that I see, Vampire Diaries. Paul Telfer is here. Paul Telfer, also in Hercules. Yeah, also Hercules. I remember you from Hercules. Oh, but you had really long hair in Hercules. I did. It was fake, but it was fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome. Thanks for having me. Great to have you here. Thank you for being here. Okay, so of course, you know, right now people would recognize you from Days of Our Lives. Yeah. How has it been going? What is it like to be part of that soap opera fandom? It's been a whole process getting used to it like being recognized in airports because you steal people's children and lock women up in cages right, right. there's a certain part of the soap opera audience that doesn't necessarily differentiate between the characters Ooh. and the people that play them right right it's, it's a very physical yeah this is this role. is what happens to me in airports so you're running up and grabbing me throwing me against the the wall you've obviously uh, been sleeping with his wife oh i wish no <laughs> I probably did steal some, I think I stole a friend of his child at that point and he thought maybe it was his, I don't know, Eric's always mad at me, so, <laughs> always mad at me about something. I love the drama in soaps, <laughs> you know, because it's so over the top, you know, right. Yeah, and these long stares into yeah. the camera and... It's taught me a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's taught me a lot about, about how to hold the camera for five seconds with nothing, nothing going, going on, on at all. There, yeah. um, it's funny because the soaps that we have back in the UK, they're really depressing. They're, they're, they tend to be about impoverished people who are miserable yeah. and you know gray skies and everybody's poor and angry. And then I come over here and so all the soap operas are rich people, but they're still angry <laughs> and they're still <laughs> un unhappy. They're angry about being rich. But they're yeah. in much nicer clothes. Yeah, you know, like, exactly. So. Have you ever gotten a soap script and you're like, Oh. Really? This is what I'm doing? Like every week. I mean, it's, it's, it's the job. Um, but actually, honestly, part of what's tricky about the job is, you know, you get a script and it says you're doing this and doing that and you know you're going to have to do those things, but you also know that there's every chance that the next script you get will completely contradict yeah. every, yeah. like, he was lying all along or, or the person that told him to do this thing was lying. And so you, you can never get too caught up in what's happening in any particular day of the show because all bets are off. The moment that episode you know, hits the screens, like, anything could happen. So at what point in your life did you decide, I am going to be a thespian? What, 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 what was that watershed moment like for you, and when was that? Well, I, think, I think part of it was I'd already, I'd already done... Um, I, I knew I enjoyed acting, but I also really enjoyed athletics, and I, I, liked, I liked using my, my vessel, you know what I mean, my yeah. body, to like, do, do things whether it was performing or, or, or hit, hitting other rugby players or whatever it was <laughs> I was doing. And, but when it came to choosing what to do as a career, obviously, you know, athletics and um, the arts are both very risky propositions um, in terms of, like, success. Yeah. Uh, and I, what I thought was more likely was that I would join the military or something like that. And I was very fortunate that um, I had teachers and mentors that said, you know, you probably have a chance at either of those things if you want to pursue them properly. Maybe do that first and, and then see if you want to yeah. join the military or, or whatever. At least go to college. I was very lucky. I was the last generation of British kids that got um, free college. Um, like the, after us, everybody had to pay tuition fees and, and everything. Right. So I was, it made a lot of sense to take that opportunity. And, and so I went off and studied acting and film. And you know, luckily, all the things I ended up doing, I didn't waste British taxpayers' money. It actually, <laughs> did actually follow through Big on it. Big applause for that, yeah, yes. <laughs> but I guess ultimately what I realized is I didn't want to be a rugby player or a martial arts teacher, teacher or a boxer or a soldier or a frogman or any of the other things I was thinking about. I wanted to be them on television or in, in a movie. Uh, do you know what I mean? Because yeah. then you get paid a lot more and you're much less likely to die. <laughs> so. <laughs> so here's to safety. Yeah. Um, okay, so I also want to, you did, so you studied film in college. Mm -hmm. So now you've kind of taken that and your making acting your own film? and making sure. your own film. Tell yeah. me about it. Well, I, something I'd, I'd always wanted to do. And to be honest, it's what I assumed I would have done. Um, I, I never anticipated just becoming, not to say just, but just being an actor because, again, like I say, it's such a risky mm -hmm. proposition. Um, but I was very lucky early on. I you know, got a good agent and started working, and then I just got a little bit lazy. I was just like, well, I'll, you know, I'll keep auditioning and the jobs come. And, but always in the back of my you know, head, there was this itch that had to be scratched to make my <laughs> own thing. 
And you know, luckily I met some friends in Los Angeles who, funnily enough, are all Scottish. Um, we didn't meet in Scotland, but we met here. O- over here. And we were all just trying to find something to do together. And we got very close over the years, um, different productions financed to different uh-huh. you know, budgets. But then they'd always fall through because it's very difficult to, mm-hmm. to make a film in, uh, under any circumstances. And so we finally were just like, let's just make whatever we can. Like, you know, let's, what's the bare minimum we could make a movie with? What's the, what locations do we have? What actors do we know will work for nothing? Like, and so we just built this whole production out of that. And that's what eventually became this film, Green Fever, that will hopefully, we should have a release. And it, it, everything should be sorted by next spring. But where's some wood I can yeah, tell you? Right <laughs> so, who knows? But right. I'm very proud of it. I, it's, Green it's, Fever, we'll be looking Green for Fever. it. It's, a very, it's very different. Well, it's funny because it's very similar in a lot of ways to what I do on the show, which is run around terrorizing people, both um, you know, uh, physically and mentally. Um, but our movies are rated, and so I get to do a lot of things I don't get to do on daytime. There so that's is. a big part of what was fun about writing the character for myself. Well, Paul Telfer, we wish you the best of luck with that film, and Thank come you. back and, when you get ready to premiere that oh, movie I would love and, to and talk see about it, it yeah. and we'll maybe get some clips out of it. And and on the way and on our way out, as we say goodbye, I just want you to give me the long stare into that camera as if we're going to break. Okay. Into, actually, into that into camera. Well, camera right? First, I'll have to react to something you said. Okay. Yes. We are going to break. (laughs) (laughs) It's so much harder when I'm not being paid. (laughs) Very good. Well done. That's the best toss to break ever. That's the best toss to break ever. (laughs)